Krishna Venula Pali, a research fellow at Indiana University School of Medicine uh, Department of Gastroenterology. Uh, I am a co-author for a GIE paper this month titled uh, Water Immersion Simplified Fecal Intubation in Patients with Redundant Colon and Prior Incomplete Colonoscopy. I'm here with the lead author for the paper, Dr. Dr. X, a cancer professor at Indiana University. Dr. X, water immersion in colonoscopy, can you give some background? Thanks, Krishna. So the idea of water immersion is that rather than filling the colon with gas during the insertion phase, we're going to fill it with water. Gas tends to move the sigmoid colon up into the mid-abdomen when the patient is in a left lateral decubitus position, makes the flexors uh, sharper. Water sinks the sigmoid colon down into the uh, left lower quadrant. The colon stays uh, straighter. As a result of that, as we put the scope in, we stretch the colon less, stretch the mesentery, use up less uh, instruments during insertion, and so there are some benefits that can derive from that. This has been started a long time ago. Though. It has been around for uh, a long time, uh, close to 30 years since it was first described, but it hasn't really gained popularity until the last few years. We've had some randomized controlled trials that have been done, especially in either unsedated colonoscopy or very lightly sedated colonoscopy that show that patients tolerate water immersion colonoscopy better than they do um, air or gas insufflation, and um, they actually probably require less medication if you're in moderate sedation. Uh, can you tell us anything about the current paper itself? So in the current paper, uh, we are looking at a series that we've had going on here for a long time at our center. There have been some previous publications from this, and these are patients who are referred here with a previously incomplete colonoscopy performed either by a gastroenterologist or a surgeon. And uh, when we get these patients in, we usually try to classify them as either, either having a very difficult angulated sigmoid or a redundant colon, one that's really long, the kind where you run out of scope before you get uh, to the cecum. And what we saw was that uh, when we made a transition back in, I think, 2008, we made a transition from where we were routinely using uh, gas insufflation to perform these colonoscopies to routinely using uh, water immersion. And so we're comparing this water immersion era to the historical control era of gas insufflation. And what we found was that there were some differences in the uh, group that had redundant colons. And one of those had to do with the frequency with which we needed to use uh, an external straightening device, um, such as uh, uh, an over tube that goes over the scope to keep the sigmoid colon stiff. So what were the what were the numbers there, Krishna? Seven uh, percent in water immersion when compared to thirty-seven percent in non-water. So in the water immersion phase, we had a dramatic reduction in the need for uh, external straighteners, and then the other thing had to do with the need for position change. And what were the numbers there? Uh, Five percent uh, in per in uh, water immersion uh, when compared to twenty-two percent in non-water. Okay, and so these were these were significant differences that we observed in favor of the water immersion period. So it looks like the um, the presence of a redundant colon may be a good time to try water immersion when you know you have a patient and that's the problem. So does water immersion clear this out in comparison to the colon? I think uh, I think it definitely does. I mean, I think the differences that we saw, uh, you know, based on my observations, were were pretty dramatic. We had one really stunning example, a patient back in 2005 that had a remarkably redundant colon that I actually back then had tried to colonoscope twice using a variety of different tricks, enteroscopes, over tubes, over tubes with enteroscopes, and had not been successful on either attempt. Actually, the only patient in the series that we had ever tried to colonoscope twice uh, and both times uh, not being successful. And we had him come back. The man's colon was so redundant that he actually had to take uh, four liters of polyethylene glycol electrolyte lavage solution on each of five consecutive days and stay on clear liquids that long to get a good prep. I uh, came in, we used water immersion, got to the cecum in about, in about 10 minutes. So uh, <coughs> that's an anecdotal uh, case, of course, but I, I think this is clearly an indication for water immersion. Uh, are there any other advantages? Uh, right now, water immersion is being studied for whether or not it could improve polyp detection. I think that it's still too soon to draw conclusions about that. So I think the established uh, indications are when you're doing unsedated colonoscopy, 
when you're doing very lightly sedated colonoscopy, and now I think with a redundant uh, colon, it ought to be considered. Uh, some some colonoscopies are probably some of this time. Their tract is entirely blocked. Why, why do you think it's not the case? It's how they think. Why, why not be blocking it in some uh, time? Sure, I think for the, for the kind of routine uh, uh, patient who's undergoing sedation that the benefits aren't really clearly established yet. Um, I think that it's a matter of personal preference at this time. Uh, probably is a good idea if you happen to run into a redundant colon and you didn't know that the colon was redundant. But for routine use, um, I still prefer gas, uh, routine cases, I should mean with sedation. I prefer uh, gas insufflation. I think it's just as fast, if not faster, in those instances to get to the cecum. There's less water uh, to clean out uh, in order to get a good look on withdrawal. And uh, we have very good quality bowel preparations here, so we don't really don't need the water immersion to improve the preparation, which I think is some of the benefit that's been seen in studies claiming that it improves bowel protection. And there, and there any specific disadvantages to using bowel immersion? Um, no, I don't think there are too much in the way of downsides other than the ones I just mentioned, is that you've got to clean a lot of fluid out of the colon. If you've already got a good prep, it's not that uh, helpful. Uh, I'm not sure that for everybody, uh, people who are who are pretty quick in getting to the cecum using gas insufflation, that they're going to find that they are faster using water immersion. So thank you so much for your time, Dr. Ross. Thank you. He's from Indiana University, uh, explaining the water immersion paper in gastrointestinal Thank you.